Shalom and welcome to Reality Check. Every year at our house, we're plagued for several weeks by a migration of Miller moths as they relocate from the plains states to the mountains. These insects, while harmless, appear to be very stupid because they have the great outdoors in which to fly around in on their way to their goal, yet they insist on forcing their way into our houses and once inside, besides being pests that poop red excrement on everything, they head straight for the windows and knock themselves out to get back outside. Even if you open a door and try to shoo them out, they'll insist on flying back to that closed window because they are fixated on trying to get out that way. It occurred to me that many people are very much like these Miller moths when it comes to God and the Bible. They focus only on what they've been taught in their churches, in their particular denominations, and they absolutely refuse to check, with the help of the Holy Spirit, what the Bible actually says about the path to heaven. Instead of diligently studying Scripture for themselves, they choose to remain trapped in their etched-in-granite convictions that keep them fluttering around on that closed window where they can see heaven there off in the distance through the lens of their New Testament-only mindset, but they absolutely cannot find a way to that place where they could fly freely into God's presence and discover exactly who He is and what He expects of them. Somehow it's just too incomprehensible for them to believe all they need to do is to cock their heads ever so slightly so they could catch a glimpse of that open door which would allow them to escape the hypnotic false light at the window and step across the threshold straight into Yahweh's kingdom where a whole new concept of God awaits them. I cannot tell you how many discussions of God in the Bible I've had with Christians in places like Starbucks or some fast food restaurant, only to be rejected once I reveal that I'm Torah observant. Just as with the Miller moths, they flutter after the light on the other side of the window reciting, well, Paul said, while refusing to find that opening which leads to truth. After all, Torah to them means law, and hey, Christians aren't under the law, and they're not about to bother discussing it either, because that Old Testament stuff was only for the Jews. Really, I ask them, according to the Torah you reject, Yahweh, our Creator, gave His instructions to the twelve tribes of Israel and to the Gentiles who came out of Egypt with Moses, who were then absorbed into those twelve tribes and told to obey his Torah the same as his natural children do. As a matter of fact, Yahweh reiterated this four times in Numbers 15, 13 through 16, for example, that all are to do exactly as his people do, meaning all are to obey his commands. Same God, same rules. While many commands were only for the Levite priests in those days, and some only for men, while some were only for women, and some were only for a certain point in time or situation, the commands were for all, Jews and Gentiles alike. Some commands were forever, such as the Seventh-day Sabbath and His seven feasts, which are strategically placed throughout the year so that we are constantly reminded of God. They are, in essence, our annual dates with God. He never once said that one day there would be a religion called Christianity where its adherents accepted Him as their God but would focus only on His Son and, more specifically, His Son's death, which would somehow end up negating all His rules, His Torah. The thing is, Torah is God's original divine instructions in righteousness, which happens to be our only blueprint for moral holy living. Let's take a look at some of the scriptures that reveal the importance of His Torah. Psalm 119, 105. Your word, Torah, is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandment, Torah, is a lamp, the teaching, Torah is a light, and the way to life is a rebuke that disciplines. 1 John 2, 3-7 through 7, And by this we will be sensible that we know Him. If we keep His commandments, Torah, 
For he that says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But he that keeps his word in him is the love of Elohim truly completed. For by this we know that we are in him. He that says, I am in him, is bound to walk according to his halaha, slash rules, slash laws. My beloved, I write no new commandment to you, but the old commandment which you have had from the beginning. And the old commandment is the word, Torah, which you have heard. Did you grasp that? It is impossible for Torah to have passed away during the lifetime of the apostles if John himself writes, writes about the word they have heard from the beginning. What else could this word be except the living Torah? Throughout Torah, the first five books of the Bible, we see Yahweh reiterating time and time again, Be holy because I am holy. How can we know how to be holy or set apart for God unless we know what His Torah is? I mean, if you had written a novel, would you want people to open it in the middle or toward the end and start reading only to read certain chapters while excluding the rest? How could your reader possibly know the real crux of the story unless they began at the beginning and were carried like a boat on a river through all the key bends which lead them to the river's mouth and to the great abundance that lies beyond? But that's exactly what people do with the Bible today. They pick and choose what parts to believe or that might apply to their lives. When the fact is they don't know who God is or what he expects of them because they have not read the whole novel. They don't know that he has rules to follow because their church instead teaches all they need to do is to believe in Jesus. Unfortunately, most don't know who Jesus is because they have spent their entire lives like the miller moths fluttering around at that closed window where they can see heaven, the goal, there in the distance, but they have no idea what it really takes to get there. So many Christians have told me, well, we study the Old Testament in our church all the time. My response is, okay, then, why haven't you incorporated it into your lives? Why haven't you ever asked yourself, why on earth would anyone think that God had different rules for Jews and Gentiles since we are all one in Messiah? What makes you arrogant enough to think you could ignore his specified rules and appointed feasts and instead follow man-made rules, observances such as Christmas and Easter and the Sunday Sabbath? which are nowhere in Scripture. For more information about what Torah is and isn't, please check out my website, The Refiner's Fire. Shalom.